In the mid-sized three-row SUV world, there are countless well-established rigs to choose from. So why would you choose a newbie like the Hyundai Palisade? Well, first, you have impaired judgment where style is concerned. Kidding! Kind of. My first reaction wasn't positive, but after some explanation from Hyundai's design team, I've kind of come around. On first sight, I disliked the disconnected chrome C-pillar trim, but knowing it's meant to evoke a sense of interlocking strength, my anti-Palisade stance has mellowed. If romantic comedies have taught us anything, it's that early contempt can transform into love. Maybe a little laughter on the way. Enough about the outside. The important stuff is inside, where ye old Palisade seats up to eight in a nicely outfitted cabin. Accessing the third row is made easy by standard one-touch sliding second row seats and a hand grip for us less dexterous folks. See the uh, grab handle there, Timmy? Look at that. Ah. Once back here, I don't totally regret visiting outer third row with Stan. The Volkswagen Atlas has a roomier third row, but even as a 5 foot 10 inch average dude, my head does clear and my knees are only slightly jammed into the second row seat back. Nonetheless, I would like to be one row forward for maximum comfort, which I can achieve with bewitched quality special effects. As dazzled as you are by those sweet special effects, I'm more dazzled by the second row seats. The view forward is expansive, passenger space is plentiful, and the seats are highly adjustable, so I can get them in the right position for me and crush whichever poor soul dares sit behind me. Bloody hell. I'm just gonna walk up front. My thumb's getting tired. Hi, Tim. Hi. In the command position, the seat fits me well, and the armrests are agreeable. Kind of soft. Although I wish there wasn't this seam right here. It kind of rubs my elbow when I'm driving in an eight and four. Uh, and here's the squirrel thing. Good job, squirrel. So, the Palisade handily lugs a small chunk of humanity, but how does it carry cargo? Well, behind the third row, there's a healthy 18 cubic feet, with 45.8 cubic feet behind the second row, and a maximum capacity of 86.4 cubic feet. Those figures roughly match the Honda Pilot and Ford Explorer, though for serious cargo hauling, the Chevy Traverse is hard to top. In the Palisade's favor, there's also an underfloor storage hold and an available two-speed, height-adjustable, hands-free lift gate. Why would anybody choose the slower speed? Maybe they want to protect their children from inadvertent lift gate mishaps. Not me. I'm more of a rub some dirt and walk it off kind of dad. While we're on the topic, the Palisade's family cred is bolstered by features parents and children will love. There's a seatbelt indicator so the driver can keep tabs on rear seat passengers. Safety first! Up to seven USB ports grace the cabin. Quiet mode deactivates the speakers for rear seat passengers. For example, timid folks who can't handle the bass drop. The front seat backs have these cool phone pockets. Cup holders are bountiful. Center console storage is vast. The available driver talk feature amplifies the driver's voice for disobedient souls in back. If you can hear me, Mike, do something dignified. Optional sunshades keep creepy weirdos out of view. Oh, hi, Ben. Those who prefer second row captain's chairs will find them standard on the SEL and limited trims. The basic 8-inch and optional 10.25 inch touchscreens both feature Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone connectivity and are simple to use, even with children screaming at you. And there's an optional 360-degree camera system, so you'll never accidentally crush your kid's bike. At this point, you might be wondering, hey, Micah, we're halfway through the video, and you still haven't mentioned the Palisades platform mate, the Kia Telluride. Look, I'm just trying to be respectful. If you meet Liam Hemsworth, you don't immediately start asking about Chris, do you? How's Chris? Shut up, Mike. <laughs> In this metaphor, I'm not saying whether Chris, the clearly superior Hemsworth, is the Kia or the Hyundai, but linger with this side by side and make up your own mind. Style aside, the Palisade and Telluride are similarly priced and share a common structure and powertrain. But there are some key distinctions. If you want a push button drive selector, power folding third row seats, or this 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster with dazzling drive mode animations, choose the Palisade since Telluride doesn't offer them. 
Personally, I'm fine skipping those features, though I will say that the electronic drive selector clears up a bunch of space beneath the console for this massive pile of fast food tacos. They cost me 12 whole dollars, but that's no biggie when you're living that blue book life. Better get eaten. No, no, no. It's an essential taco. Just like its Telluride kin, the Palisade rocks a 3.8-liter V6 teamed Ponch and John style with an 8-speed automatic transmission that tows 5,000 pounds in all trims. Fuel economy is typical for the segment, with the $1,700 all-wheel drive system incurring a minimal efficiency penalty. Heads up, front-wheel drive Palisades are 1 mpg thirstier in the city than front drive Tellurides, for some reason. Cruising the mean streets of ultra-safe suburbia, the Hyundai Palisade provides a confident, graceful ride and predictable handling. Honestly, the Palisades road manners are mostly unremarkable, but for a family looking to minimize life's complications, a general lack of flaws is actually strong praise. I will say that fully loaded, the Palisades V6 could use a bit more oomph. But in most situations, power is not an issue. Oh, and if you like customizing your SUV's attitude, there are several drive modes. Skip the frenetic sport mode and try eco mode. It has a smooth throttle feel that I actually like without feeling lethargic. Yeah, I'm accelerating. <laughs> Live simply and a base Palisade SE trim with lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking, smart cruise control, and a long 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty clocks in under $33,000, including destination charges. For our money, the $2,000 pricier SEL trim is a worthwhile upgrade. Its proximity key, heated front seats, power driver's seat, and second row climate controls. Go buck wild in an all-wheel drive limited trim filled with Napa leather, line view monitoring, dual sunroofs, and 20-inch wheels lands north of 47 grand. With more than competitive pricing, the Palisade is a viable alternative to the names you'd expect or even pricier three-row luxury SUVs. In fact, drive the fanciest of Palisades instead of a modestly equipped Mercedes-Benz GLE, and you can use the surplus cash to pay for your pilot's license. Let that sink in. We sure do have fun on these shoots. <laughs> Before giving you the impression of breathless praise, I'll quickly note that the Palisades dome light switch is not illuminated and impossible to see at night. These cup holders are gimmicky with questionable usability, though they do look super cool deploying in slow motion. And this sparkly trim looks cheap. Nonetheless, the Hyundai Palisade has miraculously emerged as a functional, refined, high-value leader in a mid-sized three-row field filled with well-established players. That is no small accomplishment. If it were my money, I'd buy a Telluride. But if this is a shape that speaks to you, the Hyundai Palisade is a supremely satisfying free row SUV. If it looked like the Telluride, I'd buy it in a snap. Uh, little help, Mike. How do I get down from here? <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing this? <laughs> uh, imagine. <laughs>